The Charlotte Hornets make it five straight after dropping the game last night to the Orlando Magic. What went wrong in this one? And did Steve Clifford unintentionally reveal something about an injury? We'll get to all of it today on Locked On Hornets. You are Locked On Hornets, your daily Charlotte Hornets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Uh, in a minute, cuz we live. We live. We live. <laughs> Locked On Hornets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Thanks for making us your first listen. We're free and available anywhere you get your podcast, and that includes YouTube. There's Doug Branson. You can find him on his Substack, stack, everyhornetsboxscore.com. I'm Walker Mail, and you can listen to me on WFNZ every weekday from 12 to 3 p.m. on Wes and Walker, 92.7 FM. So the Charlotte Hornets, they lose again, Doug. It's five straight now. It was – it we're – really far out from the time that we were all rejoicing in a five out of six win. They were very good after the trade deadline defense. One of the best defenses in the NBA. Actually, Mm -hmm. it's still pretty far up there. The offense is falling way down. The offense has been terrible. Even with some of those wins, it wasn't very good. And the losses, it's even worse. So here we are with a bunch of struggles against, by the way, a red hot Orlando team. If you look at what they've been doing, especially the past two weeks, they're actually fourth in the NBA in point differential, and they're over 10 games above 500. So this is an Orlando Magic team where maybe it's not pretty. In fact, Steve Clifford opened up his press conference yesterday saying that was not an aesthetically pleasing NBA game to watch. (laughs) (laughs) Understatement of the year. Which is not, which, which is a brand of basketball that charlotte has been playing with like that's Mm -hmm. what we've seen from them a couple of times so yeah orlando good defensively and have just enough talent offensively to put some points up but um this one was ugly orlando gets it done they're a good basketball team hornets aren't playing like a good basketball team and doug the hornets dropped their fifth straight uh yeah i mean look think back to that last win that they got against Portland and we got on the show and they had won like what five of six or whatever and we got on the show and we're like ah, something this offense is not looking very good you know if they play good teams something bad might happen and and people were chirping at us saying hey well, let's celebrate the good and it's like oh well, it's fine to celebrate the good but I just we were trying to warn everyone that you know they were one or two injuries away and a bad offensive night away from from really putting up less than 90 points. And here we are, two injuries to Seth Curry and Cody Martin that have really uh, hurt. Not only – look, they're still playing good defense. I think they caught Orlando on a weird night too. Uh, but, you know, I think both of those players did good things for them offensively as well. And so they're missing those guys. But this was a game to me that was about energy and composure. And in the first half, they didn't have enough energy. Brandon Miller in his postgame press conference admitted as much. Steve Clifford blamed it on the fact that they've played eight games in the past 13 nights. We know this has been a brutal stretch post-All-Star break. They finally get two days off now before having another back-to-back Friday and Saturday. They just haven't had a lot of rest, and they look tired. By the end of the game, Nick Richards looked like he was wearing concrete block ones. <laughs> like he was, he was moving slow. They finally yanked him with like 8.40 to go because mm-hmm. he was doing more more harm than good at that point. But he wasn't the only one. A lot of guys look sluggish, particularly in the first half. And in the second half, when they they tried to get themselves back into the game, there were texts flying. Grant Williams was making a lot of bad fouls, a lot of bad shots. We've seen that from this team when they struggle offensively. They don't don't take a step back and go, okay, let's get back to what was making us successful. They tend more often than not to just fully continue to dig themselves in a hole, go more ISO, Uh, take more bad shots and then on top of all of that Walker you had one of their best players a guy who's going to take a majority of the shots most nights Miles Bridges who was absolutely terrible three of 16 from the field seven points three assists three rebounds Uh, also had three turnovers and four fouls couldn't buy a bucket at the rim Uh, it was not a great night for him no, it was terrible. It was it was one of the worst games that we've seen from him all season long. Three of 16. And you're right. I mean, buying a shot at the rim, Doug, this is what we mentioned with this guy. It's, it's not coming was, out of nowhere. Yeah. 
th- this was a strength for him a couple of years ago. And now even after this game, if we continue to just reference the advanced metrics that we've done the entire season, going to cleaning the glass where he's shooting in the rim, the three non corner three, all that stuff. I mean, it continues to go down at the bucket. And last night was terrible at the rim. I mean, he couldn't hit anything. And this goes to the tune of him missing so many bunnies at the rim. And this is what happened with him. I don't want to say that they're bunnies, right? Because that indicates that they're wide open layups or they're touch shots with not a a lot of contact. There was a lot of contact. Like Orlando is a good defensive team and they're big. They're long. This is what Orlando had built themselves for, right? This is a team that if they saw a six, eight or above player with a seven foot or above wingspan, they drafted them. Give me. Well, they, they finally got Paolo Boncaro to be the lead dog and he can handle and he can finally facilitate. They, they actually have some players that can make things happen a little bit offensively. And then it all comes to fruition, this vision that they have. And Jamal Mosley's doing a good job. So, yeah, it, it's not like Miles was just missing wide open layups. I don't want to paint that picture. But this is Miles who you would think he's a, he's a strong guy. Like th- This is his strength. This is what he does. And so yeah. when you're talking about a player that isn't is his strength isn't working for him anymore then how good of a player is he right now? And the answer is not very good, especially if you go back to last night. So that's the issue. It's not like he's been bad all season long. He's still the second best player on this team with Brandon first. And, you know, look, if you let Steve tell it in the press conference and with just what they're doing, Steve is telling you, I need to do a better job at drawing up more plays to get Brandon Miller free. I, Brandon is our best offensive chance. He's the guy that needs to lead and hold the basketball he, he, Steve Clifford is telling you that Brandon is our best player. Like it's, I think you can put together a collection or a montage of comments about Brandon Miller from Steve Clifford the last couple of weeks. And that would paint a picture that, Hey, we think Brandon is our best guy. And so that brings miles bridges clearly second, but second and three of 16, it's going to be tough to overcome, especially when Brandon's actually hit a little bit of a lull here the last couple of weeks as well. Yeah, he took the most shots. I mean, he took one more shot than than Brandon. And uh the the Brandon stuff is interesting because I think Clifford is right. They've got it and he and I could see him in the second half slowing everyone down, you know, throwing up the horn sign and and trying to call some plays. Because but look, the NBA has trended more and more towards don't slow it down, don't call plays, you know, f- more freelance, more free flowing and and attack defenses early because if you slow it down and you call a play, well, that gives the defense time to adjust. And so, you know, more of this stuff is trending. But if you do that, it allows Michich and it allows Mann and it allows Bridges to find those little windows that they that they go attack instead of run the play and try to get the ball into Brandon Miller's hands. But they have to do that because Brandon Miller um, is playing exceptionally right now and he needs those he needs those shots. So so that's that's one thing. But back to the Miles thing, I do want to be fair to Miles a little bit in this game. He wasn't a disaster on both ends of the floor. I thought he actually did a good job, although it is a team effort to guard a guy like Paolo Bancaro. There were moments where he was doing a really good job of of keeping Paolo to a pedestrian first half. You know, uh, Miles got that wrist injury in the yeah, third quarter. True. And I thought like through two and a half quarters, they did a really good job of just like capping what Paolo could do. Like he could go off for 30 and a half and they really put the clamps on him and miles was a big part of that but and i've said this all season without Lamelo ball you have to have unfair expectations of miles bridges and miles bridges should want those unfair expectations of playing good on both ends of the floor because those kinds of if he lives up to the unfair expectations he gets the the money that he wanted this past off season that the hornets didn't want to give him and that's why he signed the qualifying offer so he's got to live up to that Otherwise, I you know I know there are teams interested in Miles this offseason, but I I don't know what the market is for a guy that is iffy from three, takes bad mid range shots, doesn't make those, and can't hit buckets at the rim. Like that's I don't know what the market is for that guy. Yeah, I, I still you know I still think it's going to get to twenty to twenty five something like that, but it it's not as strong of a finish as we saw right before the trade deadline, right? Right before right. we got there, he was playing very well, or maybe and even after it was okay, here we go. This is, you, you know, hopefully LaMelo comes back soon. It'll be he and, and Miles playing two-man game. Now you just bring Brandon Miller along. 
this is going to be the three man game that we've right. all been waiting for. And now my one, you don't get Lamella back, which is going to hurt. We'll see what happens there. We've chronicled it quite a bit. And then once miles, I, now that Brandon is the guy miles, we've seen him take a little bit of a dip, but, but that's, that's always the concern when you sign a guy on a qualifying offer, or you sign a guy to a one year deal is that you get to this point in the season and all of a sudden these last, however many games, 1920 that they have left, Th- th- these are all of a sudden extremely important games for Miles Bridges. It probably makes it more difficult to get the ball into Brandon Miller's hands because Miles has to feel a sense of like, I got to do something here. Mm-hmm. I got to get out of this run. I got to get out of this hole. And that's why I've been saying for a while now, nobody wants LaMelo ball back more than Miles Bridges because it takes the ball out of Miles Bridges' hands in terms of the person initiating the offense and gives him more opportunities at the rim created for as opposed to creating for himself where he's getting into trouble and he's getting stopped like he's not always getting to the rim at will anymore and that's when he's pulling up and somebody uh i think somebody on the broadcast mentioned this dell mentioned this he said for the past couple of games miles playing the four has been up against longer bigger opposition and that gives miles problems particularly at the rim, but also just not getting to the rim as often as I'm sure Miles would like. And so so that's a difficult thing, too. When you talk about the size of this team, you know, it'd probably be better for him to be playing the three than the four when he's going up against some of these bigger playoff-level teams that are going to present matchup difficulties for him. All right, speaking of the size of this team, Steve Clifford, I think, unintentionally revealed something about a particularly big injured player on this squad. We'll get to that comment in just a moment. Coming up next on the Locked on Hornets podcast. Don't go to sleep on the Hornets just yet. Is Mark Williams out for the season? And did Steve Clifford say that last night? We'll get to that in just a moment on Locked on Hornets. Before we do that, I want to tell you that this episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. That's what brings home the winning trophy. It's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, even more than that. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or you get your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. More Locked on Hornets ahead. Before we get to more comments from Steve Clifford in the postgame presser about the lack of size from this team, Brandon Miller, Doug, um, I saw this on my timeline quite a bit. It, it feels like people wanted Brandon to take more shots. And in the second half, I think he got more up, if I'm not mistaken. But in yeah. the first half, it didn't feel like that was happening. Is it, it Steve Clifford even told you, right? We referenced this in the first segment. Steve Clifford said, yeah, we should draw up more sets for him. Like we, we need to make sure if they're defending him at a high level, throwing a bunch of good defenders at him, it's not even that they're giving him different looks. They're giving him different good looks. I mean, Jonathan Isaac is a special defender, and I think you saw that here. Even if Brandon shook him a little bit, we can get to that in a moment, but still, um, Steve Clifford wants to give him more looks. It feels like he should have taken more shots. Well, yeah, I mean, in the first half, I think his usage was at 17%, and you compare that to Michich, who was at 32.2. He's running the points, so you expect him to have high usage. And he did good things with it, by the way. I mean, Michich and Mann, I think, both had really good games. 21 points for Michich, 18 for Mann. Love and Mann what was I doing a little bit man. of everything. Love it's a what good I man saw game. Man. Yeah, really good was. Man game. Yeah. So, uh, but then Bridges in that first half had 32.2 usage and did not do great things with it. So, yeah, he needed more. And, he, and when Brandon Miller has the ball in his hands, you can see what he can do. He was crossing up Isaac on that ISO play. He had that one play where. He, he, it felt like he shook like four magic defenders. Like he was crossing guys up. He was making moves. He got to a little fadeaway jumper at the baseline. Probe, 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 make a move, hit a shot. Like it's the kind of stuff that we've only seen other teams do for a long time or have a player that can do that, that can break down an entire defense off the dribble, create for himself in that way. Um, 
you know, LaMelo can do it, but in different ways, not, not in the way that Brandon Miller can do it. And so it was, it was super exciting to see. And yeah, you want to have him have more opportunities, even if he fails, because, you know, I, I think he had multiple turnovers in this game because Orlando is aggressive on ball, although they were fouling him. And I don't know if you saw Clifford, Mad, mad dad, mad Clifford was oh, about yeah. to get thrown well, out of that tackled. game. Yeah, I mean, I thought he was going to get ejected. The, the way he was acting, yeah, he he de-escalated quite quickly. He went very, he escalated quickly, and then he brought that thing right back down. I don't, he didn't want to get ejected. He wanted to win that game, That's so it. It, it was close. But he won. But he was. But look, he was defending his guy. This is his guy now, by the way, Brandon Miller. And and he was hinting at it at the beginning of the season, giving you those little nuggets of of Cliffordisms of like plays the right way. You don't see guys like this coming into the league this early like this anymore. But this is his guy. He will go to war for Brandon Miller. And, and I'm not sure he would go to war for other players, other good players on this oh. roster like he wow. does for okay. Brandon Miller. Just saying. Really? I haven't okay. seen that reaction for other guys. I yeah. What, what he had he had an ejection once this season, if I'm not mistaken. I think he got ejected. And I forget what it was. Um, yeah, I I will say too. It, I I don't know how many times I've seen Lamelo get flat out tackled. So <laughs> like Steve Brandon, that was so that play was right in front of me where we sit in the media. I attended the game last night, and it's it's right there. And it's amazing that they didn't call it. I mean, it was, they had three separate chances to call that foul and they never did. And that's why Steve Clifford was beside himself because then eventually Brandon just ends up on the court and it ends up a turnover. So yeah, the, the play, I think the, the ridiculousness of the play, I think that also contributed as well. But yeah, I mean, I'm not going to argue Brandon Miller is Steve Clifford's guy. He clearly is. Well, one more quick thing off of that off of that take on the, the the Brandon Miller play. I encourage everyone to go to Tom Habistro's Substack and just get the free trial and read his latest write up on why scoring all of a sudden in the middle of the NBA season has absolutely cratered. And he does the data analysis and he looks at it and he, he throws the charts up there. And one thing is really clear: the scoring is down, and the referees are calling less personal fouls. They significantly less personal fouls. They are mm-hmm. letting players play, and I don't know why. It it it's so clear that it almost has to be some kind of edict that has come down from the league to the referees saying, "Quit calling all of these touchy Riggs. fouls at the rim." And I'm not saying that's why they did that on that Brandon Miller play, but I am positing that that could be part of Miles Bridges' struggles because on a lot of these plays, he's looking for contact, he's looking for fouls, he is not getting them, and he's getting very frustrated by it. But it's not just a thing about them not calling it for Miles. You can look at these past couple of Hornets games and go, man, these games have been like super physical and they are letting these guys play. I don't think that's an accident. Tom doesn't think that's an accident. It's affecting NBA scoring across the board. And the Hornets and every other NBA team, these players have got to start adjusting to that and saying, all right, look, if they're not going to blow the whistle, let's start playing like that Mm -hmm. on both ends. I want to talk about Brandon Miller a little bit more. Do we do that here or do we go to Mark right now and then go Brandon Miller? No, no, no. That, it's fine. Look, you stay for this. This is a very a packed show. So if you want to hear the Mark stuff, stick around. Okay. Let's, let's talk right. about Brandon. Let's do that because, you know, we two days ago, we had the Brandon Miller conversation about the mid range stuff. It was on display again, right? He goes four of eight from three in each of the last two games. Yeah, 50% on eight three pointers. <laughs> It's pretty great. Okay. Yeah, you're going to take, take that every time. It's pretty great. Okay. <laughs> so I just want to, I want to make that clear. I want to yeah. make it clear. Yeah. Um, three of seven from twos is not. And that's what he went last night. Like 11 of 21 against the Raptors, four of eight from three. And so I guess if you do the math real quickly, that's what? Seven of 13. Uh, you know, that's, you know, fine. Like above 50% from two. Right. That's getting up, right. getting up there. I just also look at the free throws, Doug, and it's it's actually he's not taking any. And I think that's also an indication of how prevalent the mid-range game is. If you look at the last seven games, so he, he went six of six from the foul line against Atlanta on Valentine's Day on February 14th. And then since then, he's taken one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He's taken seven free throws in the last seven, seven games. Seven free throws. Ah, ah, ah. Yeah, that's right seven free throws the last seven games that's 
and that's one game where he had three. There's three games where he took zero. Mm -hmm. That's that's a lot of basketball in your hand. That's Mm -hmm. a lot of playing time Mm -hmm. where you're just not getting to the rim at all or even, you know, having any free throws. This is the next part of his game that I want to see. And we've got 20 games left and it's not going to happen on this master volume the rest of the way. But this is the next stop. It's it's not even like I I don't want to. We talk about the rim a lot because it matters so much, right? Like even yeah. people with advanced metrics, it's oh, okay. Well, you know, it's all about three point land. You have an open layup and fast break opportunity. You're going to shoot an, an open three. You know, still getting to the rim is the most efficient. It's the most effective way. And that's not happening. And then you're stalling out in mid range a lot. And that means you're not getting fouled. And then Doug, you know, even the assist percentage isn't great. Like there's, there's a lot to, he has all of the tools and he's shown that on a wide array but I'm. It'll be interesting to see all the other stuff come into play once we get to the beginning of next year, especially with Lamelo back out there on the court because that changes so many things. He's getting stronger every day, but he's not there yes. yet. And he said it after the the game. He made yep. a point to mention this that he's pa- he's trying to pack on the pounds. That's his focus because this is the thing. And and you were looking at your stats while while you were talking there, so you didn't see me like point to my biceps mm, multiple I did not times see that. in, yeah, I in did a not. response to to what you were saying there because that's what this all comes down to that he's he he knows and this is actually a good thing he knows he's not strong enough to consistently take it to the rim and and if he because if he did that if he thought to himself well I know what's successful in the NBA even though my body's not ready I'm going to do it anyway that he would be even worse you know offensively for the team if he did that so he's not playing outside of what his capabilities are. I just think as he gets stronger, you are going to see that transition. And we'll be on here a year from now going, hey, remember when we were talking about that thing? Mm -hmm. And now he's doing the thing, you know? So, so you're totally, all of your analysis is correct. And, and all, and, and all it's going to take is for him to get bigger and stronger. And um, it's not a guarantee. All bodies react differently to training. You hope that that happens. Um, And, and, but I think it will. Well, and, and by the way, I saw Richie Randall tweet this out. Like last night, you saw him give the chicken wing maybe three times at mid range, and no one is telling you he's scared. That's that's false. Oh, no. Zero zero fear from Brandon. That was true the first week we saw him play basketball. Like that's something that we have been championing since we saw him play immediately in the NBA. He gave you the chicken wing a couple of times at the free throw line to free himself up for some mid-range jumpers. And so there, there is some physicality there. Like he'll welcome it at times. It's just not in a way that's going to draw fouls yet or no. in a way where he's going to get in the restricted area. And that will be the the next part that hopefully we'll see next season, right? If the, if the idea is for this guy to hit superstar level, become all NBA level player, and he has time, it doesn't even mean – Remember, progress is not always on an escalator, right? Like, it doesn't mean that's going to happen. But that is the next thing that we're looking for in order for him to, you know, ascend to those type of heights. Well, and if if Tom's analysis holds and they continue to call the game at the rim like they've been calling it the past, you know, 20, 30 games, then Brandon Miller's pull-up mid-range all of a sudden becomes a huge asset to the Well, team. and I was thinking about this, too. Th- this is when – so th- it's unfortunate – that they're not going to see this type of basketball this year. But that skill set in the playoffs, Mm -hmm. hell yeah, man. Mm -hmm. We'll take that all day long in the postseason when flat defenses just flat out won't let you get to the rim. Like, I'm sorry, we're not letting you do this. So hope you you got a good shot maker on your team because you're going to need it. Okay, we got that. Like, that's that's nice. The fact you're almost skipping steps. If, If we talk about skipping grades, Brandon Miller almost is at a place where he's ready for the postseason because of his shot making in that mid range. And you, you would like to see him get to the foul line more or whatever, but he's almost ready for that. But the Hornets aren't Doug, the Hornets aren't even if Brandon is, and hopefully Jeff Peterson is able to get these guys Still ready. Still haunted. Yeah, it, it's still haunted. All right. Welcome, welcome to the haunted house, Jeff Peterson. I hope someone on the set wears like a death costume. Welcome. Right. Bring an extra <laughs> when they when they when, are on the uh, press conference booth. Mm-hmm. I hope someone is wearing a death costume. Welcome, absolutely. Welcome to the haunted house. Bring a change of pants. It's scary here. I'm just telling you. <laughs> 
One more segment to go coming up next on the Lockdown Hornets podcast. Don't go to sleep on the Hornets just yet. <laughs> now we'll get to the unintentional reveal we've been speaking of from Steve Clifford post game press conference. And Jeff Peterson speaks to the media in a little over an hour from now as of this recording. So we'll talk about maybe some of the questions we want to hear answered from Jeff Peterson coming up next. Before we do that, I want to tell you that this episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Therapy can be different for everyone. Most of us have bigger problems than just our favorite sports team, and it's important to get things off of your chest every once in a while. And sometimes we all need that opportunity to get something off of our chest, whether it's big or small. Certain things can really start to get to you. It's important to let that out, especially to someone who's unbiased on your life. If you're thinking of giving therapy a try, then give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be flexible and suited to your schedule. What you can do is visit betterhelp.com slash locked on NBA to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H E L P, betterhelp.com slash locked on NBA to get 10% off of your first month. One more segment to go, locked on Hornets. All right, Doug. So as I mentioned, I was at the game last night and I attended pro, uh, the post game presser for Steve and he was talking about how the game was ugly and they're tired and this was a lack of physical energy. And he made sure to mention that it wasn't because of a lack of want to. I, I like that Steve Clifford made that clear. It, it was the fact that they were physically running out of gas rather than just, you know, not coming out with an energy because it was a choice. It wasn't a choice. Um, he also spoke about some of the problems that Orlando and other NBA teams pose to this team because they're tiny. I asked him, there were a lot of slams in the second half. A goodness gracious. It was a, it was a jam party like Palabon Caro sick dunks. It all started with Fran, Franz Wagner just hammering it home. It was one of the best, one of the most aggressive dunks I've seen in person this year, probably the most from Wagner. And then Mo Wagner even got it on the action. Anyways, I was talking about that a little bit and well, Steve Clifford said something about that. And then he discussed how we can anticipate them being small the rest of the way. Especially the second half. Yeah, we're, I mean, we're, look, you know, we're tiny. Yeah. I mean, by NBA standards, and it's not just at the four and the five. I mean, we're tiny everywhere. But we also have strengths that way, you know. So, like, um, like for instance, playing Grant at the five, actually, that's our best offensive and defensive group, you know, because he gives us so much more versatility. Um, and, and, again, in the big picture, um, you know, so much is this is evaluation, you know, but to truly evaluate, which our guys are doing, we have to play to win, which, you know, we did. We just, we lacked the energy tonight. But I, I you know, like those things you're talking about, it's, it's just where we're at, you know. I mean, um, we're going to be smaller here for the rest of the year. And um, so, you know, we're going to have nights like we did against uh, – Philadelphia, right, where, you know, like the biggest difference in the game was offensive rebounding points for them, you know. We're going to be smaller here for the rest of the year. I know my eyebrows raised. I know I got texts, multiple texts from people saying, did Steve uh, Clifford just tell us Mark Williams is going to be out for the rest of the season? I typed back, yes, that's exactly how I took it. Doug, I saw that's also how you took it after you tweeted this clip on uh, your handle, Doug Branson, LOH. Yeah, you like that? I stole your work. Uh, so <laughs> I, I, I like that I texted you about it, and then you immediately went to Twitter to go post it. That's what the amazing hey, part you, I, I, just, I, do you, you have that. a Twitter. You have a Twitter account too, right? I mean, you could have, you know. Yeah, you know, right. I guess I was. I, got those, I, I was going to save it for you, man. I was going to save it for you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, this is not an official declaration and you could, if you wanted to be generous about it, say, well, he did mention that they're really small across the board. Like you're small at point guard without LaMelo. Mm -hmm. You're small in terms of, in terms of just like muscle and strength. You're, so, you're, you're a little smaller than most teams at the wing, even with Brandon. Brandon's tall and long. Once he puts on the muscle, then all of a sudden you get bigger, uh, without Cody Martin. Um, when you have to play man and Micic over having Martin in that starting lineup, you're smaller. And so if they expect to miss those guys for a significant time, then yeah, they're probably going to be smaller across the board. Uh, but I, th I think it's a good 
bet. If we're betting the buzz, bet the buzz, then I would bet that that he knows that well, Mark is not, not coming back from this back injury, uh, and it's going to take time if they want to avoid surgery. This is where I arrived after hearing it. It was, okay, I don't – you're right. It's not an official declaration. But does Steve say that if he anticipates Mark Williams coming back? <laughs> I, I, that's where I arrived. No, and, and he I mentioned Mark specifically to, in the defensive rebounding point that he was trying to make. No, I, I'm with you. I, oh, no, I, I, think, no, I don't. Yeah. yeah. I just am thinking like this is what I was thinking last night, too. It was like, OK, I don't want to run away with it before. But he said we're going to be smaller the rest of the way. Everybody else heard it that same way. And if you think we got 20 games left. We got 20. That's it. So if you anticipate Mark Williams returning, you don't have it. It, it would be different if he said, we're going to have to play for a long time without some size or whatever, mm -hmm. but we only have 20 games. It's reasonable to expect if Mark Williams hasn't returned yet, then he just won't be back at all. And then he says, we're going to have to be small the rest of the year. If Mark Williams is supposed to come back in like 10 games or a week's worth of time, then he doesn't say that. That's a weird comment. So yeah. I think I, I wish honestly, like the weird, the, the protocol of being in that room, I had already asked a couple of questions. And so it's time to hand it off. If I was aggressive, I could have asked, wait, is Mark Williams going to be out the rest of the year? So I'll take the L on that well, one. He too. wouldn't have answered that. I don't I'll think just give you his answer right now. Well, no, that's not my job. I don't do that. You got to ask the trainer. Like, you know, I'll just give you the answer. But, right. But now. part of, but part of the, the Q and a process is forcing that answer. And then maybe you're wrong. Like we don't know for sure. Maybe he just says, you know what? Cat's out of the bag. Bleep it. Yeah, we don't anticipate Mark Williams returning. Like, yeah, but he's, so maybe. Right, but he's being honest about what the Hornets' problem is when they're small, which is, yeah, they may play better defense in the half court. They may force more missed shots with Grant Williams at the five because Nick Richards cannot guard anyone up top. He's got to drop. And def and uh, opposing offenses know that. He's so you might be better defensively. You can't yeah. stop. He's got to drop on the roll. Right. So, oh, I got you. There you go. Yes. Yeah. He's not on fire, though. The other That's team. Right. Is. <laughs> He's not. He was not one field goal last night. Uh, so, but the problem is rebounding. They got the, I think, 14 second chance points for the Magic in this one. Turnover is also a big problem because of that aggressive Orlando defense. Huge problem against Philly. It'll be prob problematic for any team that wants to crash the glass. Even teams that don't traditionally crash the glass can read the scouting report and go, hey, when Grant Williams is in the game, crush them. And it's less about Grant Williams and about the fact that they are small at so many other positions. Like, Trey Mann is pretty good at hunting down long rebounds, but he's not going to get in there and, and get a tough one at the rim. Uh, same thing with Michic. Although Michic, Michic is a physical player when he's driving on offense. You know, again, he he'll, he'll, get, a, he'll yeah. get a rebound here and there, but not going to be dominant from, from that position. And then all across the board, you've got guys that are undersized. And so, so that's the problem for the Hornets. It's a problem they can't solve this season. Uh, but that's, you know... I took a lot of this press conference as not him saying this directly, but indirectly the the cloud floating above it, everything is, hey, Jeff, hey, new guy, Jeff Peterson, EVP of basketball operations, you got some work to do on this roster. Good trade deadline, brought some NBA level pieces in here, but got to get some bigger pieces too. There's some work to do for old Jeffy Pooh. Uh, I, I took <laughs> you, you just wanted to rhyme. You just wanted to say poo because you wanted to say poo and you just wanted to rhyme. I know you're I know you're gig. You know me. We've been working um, together too long. Um, No, but I, I took it as something very similar in. Hey, what do you want me to do? Like, this is what I have. In fact, he flat out said it. This is kind of who we are. That's it. it might have been verbatim what he said. Um, I did real quickly. Trey, man. Awesome game. I'm sorry we didn't focus enough on you. Sorry, Brandon buddy. Miller is going to take precedent. That's just he, how closed. he closed. He closed the game. He, he closed. And he deserved it. And and he deserved it. Like, Michich played well, but man, defensively, I thought he made excellent reads twice totally. where he comes from backside and anticipates. One, one time, baseline, he comes all the way over and then steals a pass. And then another out there on the perimeter, he steals it. And Miles Bridges doesn't finish the layup. It was a terrible game for him. But, like, Trey Mann was very good. Electric, too. Like, some step-back jumpers. The patented man. There's step no back. dirtier move sweet. on this team right now than Trey Mann's step-back. There is no dirtier move. Yep, he was awesome. Speaking of Jeff Peterson, rapid fire. What's a question you want heard or answered here today during press availability? It's coming up soon. What's missing? What's missing on this roster right now that you think needs to be addressed um, immediately? Uh, I mean, I, that's that's my long term. I mean, short term, you know, 
w- w- Miles Bridges situation, Lamelo situation. I don't think he's going to have a ton of answers because I think yeah. the easy thing for him to say is, "I'm ju- I just got here. I'm evaluating." You know, I, I think that's that's the deal. He did do an interview with Bally with uh, Ashley Shahamadi on the sideline, and he looked a little nervous. I don't know if you caught this interview, but he. You know, um, I think that when you are an assistant GM or a GM, when when you've got somebody above you that's going to do all the press conferences, you don't have to be in front of the cameras a lot. So this is going to be a big adjustment for him of saying, hey, I'm now I've got to be the front facing person that that communicates the vision uh, for for this franchise. And so that'll be interesting to watch him develop over the years. Uh, But. Clifford said before the game, you know, he is a great communicator. The the better thing for him would be to be a great communicator behind the scenes and and everything that I hear is that that he is that. So that's good for the team long term, but it'll just be interesting to see him interact with the with the media today. We haven't had a we haven't had somebody that's front facing like that that's been really savvy with the media in a very long time. I, I hope that he knows the payroll situation unlike Mitch Kupchak <laughs> introductory <laughs> press conference. <laughs> <laughs> please please understand that and pretty thoroughly as well that would well, be but nice. again but does he understand that right now i think it would be he's been he was working another job <laughs> you know what i'm saying like he was focused on on something else and now all of a sudden he's part of I the hornets organization so i'm willing to give that a little bit of grace here in this first press conference if he doesn't know the ins and outs of the hornets cap situation because i think uh if i'm not mistaken Mitch came in in the off season, right? Like he would have had time to well, figure that stuff no, out. No, we are not letting him off the hook. And I know you're not doing that. I don't even know if I'm giving Jeff Peterson much grace. It's Kimball Walker's contract for right. Mitch Kupchak. No, I, no, I wasn't. Let, no, I, in, no I in fact, I was doing the opposite. I was saying he should have known right. that. I don't think I'm not going to hold Peterson to that same standard because he's coming in in the middle of the season. I think you just need a one hour scan of basketball reference to know <laughs> What the payroll situation is? I just need the contracts. I just yeah, if he says that, uh, that's what I yeah. That's basketball what I, referees. I'm trying to think of some questions that are are actually going to be revealing. I'm going to try to attend. I don't know if I'm going to have enough time. I'll try probably just hop on. But like I I wonder if what 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 could we learn today? Because Miles Bridges needs to be asked. We're not going to learn about it today. Injuries. We'll see if those are asked. We won't learn about those today. What's a question that we'll learn something today, Doug? Here's what I would like to know, and if it gets answered today, or fine. But again, I'm I'm gonna give this a little time. I want to hear what he says after he has an off season to kind of look at things. But but I would like to know what the vision for this franchise is. How quickly he thinks he can turn this thing into a playoff contender. I want to set some goals. I want to set some dates. And I want to hear what he feels like this franchise can do. What can they do in free agency? What I don't. I, I want to hear less about challenges. I want to hear more about a positive vision for this franchise. And I don't know how you frame the question to try to get some of that out of him, but that is what I'm interested in hearing from him. In fact, I don't even think you need a question to be asked to have that. I think you just come loaded with, hey, I understand where the franchise has been, Here's where I want to take it. Yeah. Something positive would be nice. If he opens up with, well, look, we're not going to be in play for this. We don't have any all-stars stars on this team. He's going to say that. All right, that'll do it. <laughs> we'll uh, recap. We'll have a lot to recap tomorrow. I believe it'll just be me flying solo, which means there will probably be a technical issue or two, but we're going to try to mitigate that as much as possible. But it's just going to be me and then maybe David on Friday as well. So that's the plan the rest of the week. We'll have a lot of content with Jeff Peterson speaking at the podium, and then we'll have a game on Friday to discuss as well. Thanks for making us your first listen. Again, we're free and available anywhere you get your podcast, and that includes YouTube where you need to subscribe and you need to hit the notification button to make sure that you're up to date on when we release these episodes. Also, catch us on our Audible mediums just anywhere you get your podcast. We're still putting out an audio feed as well. Have a great rest of your day. We'll be back with you tomorrow.